Hey, what's going on Facebook? Apostle Zach here. Went out and voted. My wife and I did. Voted for Donald John Trump, America's fine president. Hope you guys are doing good. I haven't done a video in the car, in the van, in a couple of months. I actually try try not to do them in the van, but I do some of my good thinking in the van, so um, as long as I'm not too, uh, as long as I keep my eyes on the road, I'll be all right. So I had a, I had a dream, like, I think it was around October 27th or around there, and I posted about it, and it wasn't anything, um, Big. In fact, I wouldn't even call it a prophetic word. It may very well have been a prophetic dream. But unlike a lot of people, I'm not quick to assume everything that I dream about is, you know, of God. However, I've never had a dream with the president before, so... Um, but in the dream, I, it was very quick. It wasn't anything lengthy. In the dream, I just saw, um, it was like I was watching the TV, and I just saw the country, like a map of the country, and it was just red. I didn't, I don't recall seeing any blue states, but it, the newscaster was just uh, talking about, you know, I don't really recall anything he said specifically, but like I said, it was very vague. It wasn't anything lengthy just, you know, flash in the pan, but I saw red, and then, um, I had an interaction with Donald Trump afterwards, and I don't recall anything that was said by either of us, I just remember him sitting in the same room as me, um, but, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be an interesting day, November 3rd will be an interesting day, we need to be praying and lifting our president up. There is no reason whatsoever that a Christian, I don't care what denomination you stand for, I, I don't care anything about that stuff. There's no reason whatsoever that a Christian should be voting for Joe Biden. We don't vote based on personality. We don't vote based on, I mean, yeah, we vote based on character to an extent, but at the end of the day, when people say vote your conscience, I don't know how much I like that phrase. I can appreciate that phrase, but I think that at the end of the day, Christians, you know, we don't have the right to opinions. We're blood-bought saints of God. We are not our own anymore. We vote according to the Word of God. So you line a hundred candidates up, or you line two candidates up, and you vote according to the candidate who checks the most boxes that are in line with God's Word. It's really, it's that cut and dry. It's that simple. We love to have opinions. We love, hey Jason, we love to, uh, we love to have opinions, man, when it comes to politics. But at the end of the day, we don't have the right to opinions. We're children of God. We vote in line with what God says. And I know a lot of people have already voted, but if you haven't voted, you need to go out and do it. You have a duty and an obligation. You have a privilege. I mean, a lot of countries don't vote. We have a privilege, a God-given right to go out and vote. And I haven't been uh, super hyper-vocal with politics, although there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a preacher that is preaching on politics. John the Baptist preached on, he confronted an evil politician of that time about a sin, and that's how he ended up losing his head anyways. So, you know, as, as ministers of the Lord, we are certainly expected to expose evil and to teach the flock, to teach the congregations, um, according to the Word of God, who we need to be voting for. I'm not going to tell people that come to my church, hey, go vote for Joe Biden or go vote for whoever you want to. No, I'm going to say, listen, this is what we're working with on both parties. And this is what the word of God 
tells us to vote for. And if you don't vote for Donald Trump, God will hold you accountable for it. And don't think that he won't. And I'm not going to go on a political rant here. I'm just driving around in circles because, you know, I'm on my way to the store and I felt froggy and felt like doing a video. But it's so important that we understand what is on the line right now. It's so important that we understand what is on the line right now. You have to vote for Trump if you're a Christian. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You're going to vote for oh, you're going to vote for Biden who is likely not even going to see uh, the end of his first term, okay? If if you can't tell that Joe Biden is a uh, suffering with some kind of dementia or mental issue he can't finish a sentence without you know he doesn't even know where he's at half the time i'm not making fun of him it's actually very sorry uh to watch it's 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 pitiful it's very pitiful to watch every time he opens his mouth if he's not pumped full of drugs you know that keep him sharp and focused for 30 seconds i mean if you watch that last debate they're about halfway down, halfway through the debate, he was done. You saw it. And you surely don't want Kamala in office. You know, I know there's Christians, I know there's there's preachers out there that say they're voting for Joe Biden. And it blows my mind that there would be any God-fearing Christian, whether you serve the ministry or you just go to church and you're just a good believer that goes to church, Whatever side you fall on in that matter, it, it shouldn't be rocket science as who you're voting for. Donald Trump has kept almost every promise that he made. Name the last politician that did that, honestly. Every promise that he made. He fights for the unborn. It says in Proverbs, the Lord hates the innocent bloodshed. Okay? So the fact that he stands against abortion and Joe Biden is for abortion, that right there is a closing argument on who every Christian should be voting for. That is the closing argument. You don't, if, if nothing else was said, if no other policies were mentioned, and it was just on abortion alone, there is no reason whatsoever why any Christian should be voting against Donald Trump. He's not supposed to be a Sunday school. You know, Jimmy Carter, if you, I was not alive during his presidency, but when Jimmy Carter was in office, he was called America's uh, Sunday school teacher or something like that. That was his nickname because of his demeanor and his character. Jimmy Carter was a very weak president. Name one thing that Jimmy Carter did. I could be wrong, but I think he, uh, he had something to do with WIC, but it may have been when it comes to presidents. Um, not all of them anyways. I have my favorites, but, you know, Abraham Lincoln. I like Teddy Roosevelt. Ronald Reagan, of course. Anyways, I'm just rambling as I'm driving around the parking lot. But I just want to encourage you, um, if you haven't voted, go vote. Like, it matters. It matters. And you don't get to complain about politicians that you don't vote for or against. At the end of the day, you, you, don't, you don't get to complain, you know. And same thing with prayer. We need to be praying for the president. We need to be praying for the president. He's 74 years old, and this guy is running circles around 20 and 30-year-olds right now as far as worth of ethic is concerned. I mean, he's flying to different states and different time zones, and he is, he, he, he's, he's essentially preaching hour and a half sermons in every state. I mean, he's going to, I mean, I think they said that he was in Pennsylvania and they had 58,000 people show up to his Trump rally, and Biden can't draw 12 people. So don't listen to those polls. They're lying. They lied with Hillary Clinton and they're lying with Joe Biden. They're lying. You can't tell me by the size of those crowds alone that Joe Biden's even got a chance. Joe Biden doesn't have a snowball's chance as hell because God's hand is on Donald Trump. God's hand has been on Donald Trump. And anybody who stands for Israel will be blessed. Period. That's Bible. So if we believe the Bible and we just saw Trump do this historical deal and 
in Israel already know God's hand is on Trump. God's hand is on Trump. So if you're a Christian and you vote against that, you are foolish, you are stupid, and you are ignorant. You are biblically ignorant. I'm not going to apologize for saying that because that's biblically factual. It is foolish to vote against somebody that you can see is standing up for God's word. Anyways, I'm going to get off here because I've been craving some uh, corn pop cereal for like three days now. And I got to go into Walmart and get me some corn pops. And then I'm going to go home and have a nice evening. I may do a video tonight. I don't know. But if you guys are watching this, feel free to share it. Go out there and vote for Donald J. Trump, our amazing and blessed president. God bless you, and you have a good day.